Welcome back to the channel, I'm OP, and in today's episode, we will be going over some of the best highlights from the matchup between T1 and HLE during round two of the LCK 2024 Spring Playoffs. Without further ado, let's dive straight into the action. Pack up packages for those, you know, second, third Drake fights like you were talking about. Things do look very nice here in this early game for T1, already picking up a thousand gold the lead here with zero kills just from laning alone. But it's going to connect and that's going to deny any sort of harassment as Fina, bit of a drive by, uh, fade away. So just constantly putting the pressure on. Speaking of which, uh, Peanut is now going to find Ono, gets a full combo here as Ono is just trying to get himself out. Emperor's Divide, and they push the rel away. The Crashdown is going to come through as Chattering Strike is a fair bit of value, but it's not going to get out of the... Pretty successful. Zeka did not have his ult. He does now. Faker, no package available here as uh, Peanut does slow Faker down. Ona is going to be here. Flash out from uh, Faker, but there's the audacious charge from Peanut. They get the knockoff and Faker is going to be taken down and Emperor's Divide immediately follows. Ona this time is going to be able to flash and will take the lantern away to safety, but still will eventually just be able to uh, hop in a tunnel and get himself out. Hamalife will be able to take the prize of a Drake, unless Ona is able to do something about it. They do have a bit of information as he gets on over. There's going to be the steal, but it might be a sacrifice of his life as well. Magnus Storm comes in and he takes the Lantern! And Carrier is going to save his jungler. And T1 are just so good at this, man. You know he's... ...much onto this, only have one Void Grub, so... Not going to be pushing this one down very quickly. Ezeka does have ult flash. Yeah, he does. And he also has Viper coming down here towards his bottom side as Emperor's Divide is going to be avoided. Ono was taking up the turret for such a long time, though, and is just going to fall down. Viper just great positioning here. Gumiushi Carrier just a little bit late to the party. Yeah, Ono a bit of a, a miss on this one. Oh, so Mega Death Can he get flashed there? As that is a lot of respect given. And now Destiny coming on through. Zayas will find the gold card, and that is a very comfortable kill. Snare should be able to keep Viper safe, but that is still some kind of damage on this turret. See how long they can stick around. It is a Nautilus and a Xin Zhao here trying to push this down. But with the minions, they should be able to get it very low. And T1 are just saying, well, we have a lot, much longer push. We have five Void Grubs. Yeah, and that is going to be a death sentence on to uh, Doran as well, who is going to get flayed back. Viper will find his way back here, and they should be able to keep this turret card locked here by Zayas. Going to throw it at a Drake for the moment. Now Carrier moving on in, Hook going to connect onto Doran. Not exactly an optimal target, but he's going to be denied the Barrow. Does have to blast Cone to get himself out of the way here. Let's see whether Ono is just going to be able to utilize the Rel to lock this one down. It is going to be secured, but can they win the team fight? Hook going to connect onto Peanut as Faker delivers a package to the back line. Viper shields himself up though, has to flash over the package to avoid the damage. Hook is going to be there under Peanut though, and he should go down. Empress Divide lands on almost everyone, and there goes the Jinx, but Viper falls immediately afterwards, and now the damage is just Zeka. Zaya zones in on it, and that will be the lockdown of the Emperor. And there is the damage gone. No one else able to offer anything back. And Delight, yeah, he's tanky. He lasts a little bit longer, but he will still be going down. And T1 wiped the fight. Uh, they're going to clear this vision, but starting the Baron, I mean, T1 definitely will just okay. contest here. This is a pretty interesting call from HLE, considering this is a Senna early it's on. Fate. Can't actually make his way up here. So I'm like Esports are just saying, we have five, you have four. And at the moment, it is three. Hook going to connect. As Ona's Magnus Storm is fantastic, he's lasting for so incredibly long and gets his way out as well. But still, Doran able to lock that one down. Zayas is now in the front line. This is dangerous, but the Jinx is now going to get excited. That is the second kill as the front line has been wiped out. And now Doran, the last one remaining with any uh, kind of health bar. And Amalife Esports going to have to get out of there. On one hand, Drake, if there is Faker with a package right there. He has Spirit Surgeon completed as well. Uh, Corky is starting to become very, very frightening. And it's, you know, a call maybe here to try to trade objectives, but it's not decisive enough, I think, for Hanwha to actually start this up. And, you know, it's frustrating to see if you're, I think, if you're a Hanwha fan. They and Hanwha Life Esports is going to take that as the go marker. Zero vision available, but of course, Destiny is. And so that means infinite vision if they would like to press the button. They are going to press it now. They're going to see that the Baron is down to 50%. Of course, if Ona gets into the pit, it's not even a 50-50 as they take down the tunnel. There's the hook. They're going to go for the re-engage. They find the knockoff, but he's just so incredibly tanky. Kumiyushi going to get jumped on here as Doran going to try to take him down. They are going to be able to do so. There is two kills to start this one off. And finally, Hamalife Esports have found a team fight. They'll get the knockoff. Empress Divide onto both damage dealers. 
still it's a double kill for Faker, but it shouldn't be a one fight here for T1, as Doran, Zekka, and Peanut are just going to try and take him down. There's the knockup. Wind becomes lightning indeed, and there is the takedown onto the Corky. That was such a coordinated fight there for Honda Life Esports. Area is over here trying to uh, just be annoying. Just be annoying, as you say. Oh. Don't think it's really going to necessarily mean anything. We'll get a teleport. Yeah, teleport from Faker in 20 seconds' time, though. So I think this Baron is just gone. Nothing that Carrier can do about it other than watch. He will be uh, spared, at least at this moment. The Baron is going to be taken down. So Hummer Life Esports, they do manage to get that. Okay, it looks like nothing too crazy. Yeah, Doran does have his uh, tunnel, but isn't actually going to be very difficult to kill. Where's the pack? Not there. Destiny yeah. has been popped here, so Hanwha, their positioning 100% known, and there is the Drake. They're going to start the fight as well as Owner is going to have to crash his way down and out of there. Super Mega Death Rocket this time not going to work out as the tunnel out from Doran. He is still at full health. He can play that front line if they would like him to. And he's just tunneling around. Does manage to eat a gold card for that one as now T1 with Pocket as well. This could be a game deciding fight. Yeah, T1 already starting this one up as Delight in position. Flame Chompers go down. Hook gonna go wide there as Zekka now finally going to join the fight. The hook is gonna connect. That's on the a flashless twisted fade as well. Still, he's able to kite this one out. The flash forward from Peanut and Doran's able to lock that one down. But now the package is absolutely gigantic. Still, Doran just shrugs it off. They are able to take down Peanut, but Emperor's Divide connects! And that is the wipeout for Humble Life. They are looking to try and end this game! 9,600 in damage for Faker on the Corky. The package is big, but it's not big enough. And it looks like it might be the end of his winning streak here on said champion as Hanwha Life with a huge team fight win here in Doran, so consistently guaranteeing these kills on the Goon with the Lanterns, even when the Jinx is over the wall with that turn from Faker, it is not enough. Oh my god, the intensity of this game, but still, I'm alive now, knocking on the front door of T1. These death timers are not exactly the longest, but the Nexus turrets are going down. Still, Owner standing his ground, trying to take control. They'll take both Nexus turrets, but they're not able to end the game. And now, yes. Destiny has been propped. Teleport to come in here as Delight is in a lot of trouble at this point. He is going to be sacrificed. And now Faker's teleported over. Is this the count to win now for T1 as the gold card? He's going to connect. Doran is not able to get out of this one. And that's Faker locking that one down. Remember, guys, the Baron is still up. And also, so is the Ocean Soul here for T1. They might be able to just be able to get both out of Hanwha Life's overextension. A misread, miscalculation on ending the game. Vision here to see Zekka trying to threaten that mid push. The Nexus is open and naked, but it doesn't matter. You only have an Azir. A little scary, a little frightening, you could say. Hanwha Life Esports now going to push down with this super minion towards that uh, exposed inhibitor, but there are still inner turrets in top and bot lane. And with the Baron, I don't think that Hama Life Esports are going get, to be getting anywhere near that uh, Nexus at any point in time. Control Ward put down as well, just to make sure there aren't any cheeky wards for the teleport. Still, Zekka and Doran don't have theirs up and available. As with five members of Hama Life Esports here, it is very difficult to defend. And now Magnus Storm is going to get that engage on through Peanut, taking so much damage now, able to use Owner to try and taxi out, but the double knockoff is fantastic from Doran! They take down the Thresh and the Rel, and now Fumiyushi is exposed, he's gonna get snared, and now the game is finally over. Hama Life Esports, it looked dicey after that push, Failed, but this time around, the Nexus will go down. And on the red side, how will I be getting a knockup onto the Zeri? Zeri will just out damage you. And early fights around Drake's become so incredibly hard to pilot here as T1 that I do really like this trap. At this point, Owner going to start off the bubs. I'm pretty sure Delight knows what's going on. Peanut is going to dive out as the hook comes out of nowhere. Thanks for that one, Jonah Strong, for the jump scares. They do find the permafrost onto Owner. The flashes come forward, and there is first blood going to the Sejuani. Sent health. And now Zeus is potentially in trouble. Finds a gold card onto Peanut, who will throw out the ulti, and eventually flashes his way out. Still, Owner is able to lock down the kill. Now, Doran, he's going to get taken down as well. The gold card is going to connect, and he's not going to be able to get the follow-up. And T1, they punish hard. As Doran is here on this top side, doesn't have his teleport available. The Twisted Fate's still on top side of the map as well. 
as Ona going to safeguard his way in, and he's just going to steal it away. It's highway robbery from this Lee Sin. He's even able to interrupt Peanut, who does get the permafrost. Viper now looking for an opportunity, but the kickback is too good. Empress Divide also fantastic, and the burst fire is there. Carrier going to get taken down into his zombie form, and he's going to find no value. And Wolf, are we certifying it? I'm going to certify it. I've got my stamp out right. He can't do anything here, and Corky can't do anything either. Whoa. There's a lot of people here in this top lane. Sorry to interrupt. No, it's all right. We're going to see whether Peanut can actually try and get some sort of gank working as uh, in goes Doran, finds a Counter-Strike onto two. Q connect here, but the dredge line, the depth charge, absolutely fantastic here from Delight. Still, there is the package delivered right underneath the turret. No one's gone down just yet, though. Another hook is going to connect as they're trying to juggle, and there is the kill going over to Delight. Zekka's coming up. Yeah, this is starting to get scary. These health bars are relatively low. But Zekka is kind of here by himself. So and he doesn't have ult. Yeah, it's not exactly a, uh, a kill opportunity. Down this early Senna right now on Hanwha Life's side. And I think opting into this and losing another fight to this area is just opting into losing the second game. Yeah, owner is on vision, remember. It's Zekka is just going to deliver him to the rest of Hanwha Life. And Viper is now on a killing spree. It's a disaster for T1. Ganking Zeri, uh, the most unexpected of gankers as he is now just going to shove this wave towards the turret. This has been, like, the most unfettered Zeri ever. The Scion, as they are going to try to come over here and contest this Herald now, Hanwha Life, they win this one. It's pretty much lights out, and T1 just walk away. And that is the concern of this accelerated Zeri. And I mentioned this in draft, I feel like the Scion can't really do what a Nautilus can do. Scion is kind of an ult button and a very large Q that if you stand in, you know, he makes an impact in the fight. If you don't, he doesn't do what a Nautilus does. And he's just a victim of vision. Yeah. And this is going to be the mid turret going down before the charge even happens. And so now Shelly going to keep that health bar as Doran does have his counter strike. And it's going to be difficult here for uh, Ono to find too much. Does just to be very cautious. This. He can both get this outer turret bottom side and make an impact here top side. There's that TP. Oh, yeah. And now the flash forward from Delight. He'll find the depth charge onto Gumiyushi in this center. He's in a lot of trouble. Zaka going to fly on over. Does find the Arise, and then the Sand Soldiers will finish the job. Doran know that this guy is always just going to be good in a team fight. Could we be looking at exactly what I was saying before, where it's T1 falling down 0-2, as this might mean no, as Dawning Shadow is going to fly on over as well, and there goes the Azir. Now, Doran, that is an unfortunate teleport, if ever I've seen one, as Carrier with a celebratory faceplant into the wall. Very strange exchange, as he will be able to get uh, Doran's teleport in his flash as well, but... Okay, Hook is going to connect here as there's the ulti out from Viper. Faker now in a whole lot of trouble as the Piercing Darkness comes in, but the flash forward from Viper says no. And now the Mega Cone from Gumiushi still. Viper able to get these burst fires over, just dashes over the wall. There's the Extendo Beam, but good sidestep from Gumiushi still. Necessarily ultimately matter that much as Doran is still Jax in the side here. And now that he's shadowed, now that they push the Senna away, he should be able to get this turret as well. We'll put Hanwha two turrets up on T1. A Fed Zeri and make proactive plays as Garia Pale flashes the wall ah, there. And yeah. that's why he ulted like that. And uh, it's a little bit rough as Faker gets caught here as well by Delight, who just feels like he is everywhere, man. It's a global Nautilus. <laughs> He's just involved in every single fight that T1, or rather the Hanwha. There they go. Hanwha have already backed away from this one. There is a kick forward. Good Arctic Assault there, but Doran's still going down so incredibly low. Delight also having to flash away. Is there's a flash Empress Divide, but it's whipped entirely from Zekker, and T1 will punish immediately. Now Viper still trying to get damage down, able to buffer. That gold card nicely, but now with a man advantage, T1, they might just move over to the Baron themselves. Oh man, Zekka's going to be feeling that one tomorrow. He better stay <laughs> off the internet for a little while, as that was such a cool idea. But the rest of his team was clearly backing out. He goes for it anyways. Now, Hollow Life, they're not just going to go quietly to that good night. They've got to fed Zeri. Oh, yeah. They're going to contest. These extender beams are scary. There is the hook in, but he's not as tanky as he was last game. And Delight will just immediately get punished. Enot has flash. Yeah, they want to try and get on in here. Doran's at full health now as Viper has pressed that ultimate button. This is kind of a Zeri fight, and he's going to take out Zayas first. Into the pit they go, but the Baron is still going to go over to T. Uses packages here, and he may just simply opt into the fights they know they have guaranteed prio on. 
to avoid getting packaged out whatsoever. Whoa, there's another flash forward here as Empress Divide is going to be used just to get Zayas out of here. The ulti comes through from Viper. He does do a lot of damage, but T1, the Phalanx... Try to deal with him in this side, but it is a Jax inside. He's looking for Faker, actually. I don't know yeah. about this. Faker is going to have to flash, but there's a flash through from Doran. Dawning Shadow does come down, but there is another leap strike. And Doran gets himself out, and okay, Doran. <laughs> I mean, he's, that's, uh, he's starting to become scary. Yeah, that was a... A little bit of a gank attempt there from T1. 44 minute, uh, seconds prior to this Baron. Ooh, As Peanut. Yushi could be in trouble. This might to break the shield. Does manage to find the ulti. And boom goes the dynamite. Six and zero now for Viper. And Hummer Life Esports, they can have control of the river. How do you like that? Necessarily a target that you can burst down. Still, they get the destiny out from Zeus who is now just going to turn his attention back towards this Baron one more time as well. He's found his way in behind enemy lines. Good zoning smash there from Carrier, but they're losing control quickly as Viper is level 16. Yeah, package is going to be delivered just to Peanut here as it was probably wearing off. And now Delight going to answer with that death charge. The flash over from Viper, the assassin Zeri! And Owner is going to kick him away, but it's not going to be anything that's actually able to help out here. Is now Carrier taking damage. Owner will be taken down. There goes the jungler, and T1 are falling apart. Somehow that Glacial Prison connects onto Carrier. And now five versus three. Hummel Life Esports will start off the Baron. Another hook is going to connect Sekka. on Zayas. And Sekka is going to make up for that ultimate from earlier. Peanut finds the Arctic Assault Flash. And Zayas will be taken down. His opposite knocking up the double. And there's the Baron for Hummel Life. Hummel Life Esports going to take this Baron. And with it, control over the map for the foreseeable future, if not for the rest of this game. Carrier, very tanky. See if he can get his way out of this one. Yeah, don't it's a think portal so. combat. Here on the top side of the map, Doran is going to break that vow. And Carrier is running the wrong direction. He is likely going to die here. His ult is coming up. will almost be the ace, uh, but it's not actually. As T1, as Guma is trying to kite back into the front line, but Owner is isolated. And Guma is eventually going to get caught by Zekka as he does come in for this follow up. And look at this. We'll watch it forward. And turn on the Baron. Guma's like, well, I have to do damage. Are done. I don't know if the Zeri dies ever. Yeah, he is an absolute monster. He definitely hasn't died so far this game. As there is a knock up on a Peanut, and Peanut does not care about it whatsoever. 6,000 gold the lead for Hummel Life Esports. They denied the soul. That is not all that relevant because it's Chemtech Hook just barely going to whiff there from Delight. As you can see, Zayas just trying to push out these waves so that Hummel Life is ridiculous. He is our highest level in the game as Delight is going to find Zayas. In goes Doran as well, and they will be able to lock him down. Gumiyushi, he just pops like a balloon, but still, Delight taking a lot of damage. The package delivered. Ona looks for the opportunity. Empress Divide avoided, but he can't avoid the prison. And now Faker has to flash away. He does manage to take down the Jack. The extended beam avoided as well. But he's still moving the wrong direction. I don't think it's going to be enough to save them. It's only three kills. TP. And Faker might be able to keep himself alive. But Peanut is going to come on over. He flashed and it shall lock him down. As you mentioned, the teleport out from Faker. But still, Hummelite Esports now. They've got Nexus turrets in their eyes. And they've got a match point that they're looking to secure. They could just go back and take Baron here. Very... Uh Funny series of events, you know, the fact that they try to flash on Faker to stop his TP, the fact that he gets out means that T1 actually have these respawns coming, but Carrier, Yeah. And Hanwha Life Esports just put Doran in the top lane, continue to push this, and they say checkmate. Yeah, well, there's the control ward, it goes down, Zayas is going to get knocked up, and there is nothing he could do about it. Viper, 9-0-4 and four on the Zeri. He has gone from problem to disaster for T1, and Hanwha Life Esports are going to head towards this Baron pit and look to try and push for the final time. If you're a believer in the butterfly effect, if you're a believer in, in dominoes falling over, it all started on that poor dragon take from T1 where owner got the smite steal, but Zeri got two kills. Ordinarily small. Zonia's for Zekka, Zonia's for Doran. There's no way to mess this up if you play it carefully in Hanwha R. Yeah, they're doing the very best. Carrier has a gigantic health bar, but he just can't really do anything else to stop Hama Life Esports from uh, getting on in here, making things happen. Guardian Angel done for Viper, so they're going to have to kill him twice in this fight if they are actually going to be able to hold on to this game. But you can see there are multiple Siege Minions 
still bearing down on the base. And now Doran goes in. He finds the Counter-Strike onto Zayas. And now Zekka gets in there. The explosion of damage is now they're in range of Viper. And that means that it's Hanwell IV Sports in range of winning this series with match point now available. Hanwell Life showing up in a big way. In this matchup? Yes. I like the draft here from Hanwell Life Esports. I, now, I think obviously this game is not about the draft purely. It's going to be about how much T1 by Ona. That was still a fair bit of work, but you can see Pino looking for a little bit of a turnaround. When becomes Lightning does come in, Azeka will have the inside track here on this particular battle. Blast Cone comes on over. There's the flag forward, and Ona locks down first blood. Immediately it is answered, and somehow it's in fact Peanut that locks down the kill. Getting the kill there before he can react, but Ona's never going to mess that up. Yep. And uh, he ends up getting first blood, so really nicely played by him, all things considered. See here, Carrier is hit by a rain of arrows, and I was just checking Peanut. to see if Summoner Spells is okay. Peanut's coming on over, there's the flag forward, as Carrier does so much damage, Peanut's burning down! It's a one for one once again, but I don't think Peanut was expecting to die so instantly. Didn't have out of, out of dodge. A dangerous situation as Faker is clearing out vision here as well. He is very dangerous with Spirit Rush available. There is an Equalizer and Zekka. He's down to 100 now underneath this turret. He, this is so dangerous as now Carrier looks to come in. He is definitely... Never mind! The Fates Call comes on down. Viper is burning and Carrier is able to lock that one down. Zekka was free food there under the turret and that's going to be lapped up by Faker. And finally, they get a kill advantage. Yeah, T1 with a huge swing of gold here after whether he lives or dies. <laughs> That's 100% true. Is now uh, Gumiushi going to help out with these Ren stacks? As owner should be able to deal with this. Is now Peanut going to get dove on? Has to flash. Get out of the way of the rumble as soon as that first harpoon lands, especially with the fact that he has his Sork Boots now completed. You know, if he had a level 11 Weaver's Wall or if he's able to get there a little bit faster, maybe they make something of it as Viper. Yep, he's going to have to walk down the red carpet. There's a flash in as once again they've got Fate's Call, and so he can freely do this. The hook is going to go wide as Ona is once again back, and the Leap Strike will lock down the kill. And now Delight is trying to grab one back. We'll be able to do so as Carrier will help grab some plate gold. Weaver's Wall going to come in as well as Zekka. He came from the other direction. That's absolutely insane. As now Peanut diving on in. Wind becomes Lightning. He's going to do a fair bit of work there, but Carrier still able to create the distance to get himself out. And T1 not going to find the charm as Wind. While before Guma can go match that, or Faker in this oh. case. Dear. Peanut well, stayed. Yeah, Peanut, he's still here. Gumiushi's at full health. They're still going to go for this dive. Threaded Volley is fantastic. There's the Seismic Shove, and Peanut, he wasn't going to die to that one. They'll take the plate, and they'll take the kill. Difficult to play these fights out. As yeah. whenever we peel up to here, I'm always like, is somebody hiding in the brush? We have all vision on. Speaking of hiding, uh, Charm is going to connect onto Peanut here, but the Weaver's Wall is going to come on down. Faker does get out of the way of the rocks, but he's just going to get taken out. The Flash was already used, and he's just going to die. And now we're taxiing over to Gumiyushi, who's also taking massive damage. Peanut locks that one down. It's a double as the bottom lane evaporates, and Ona is trying to get something back. Does take down the Varus, but the Threaded Volleys are chasing the Jack through. Still the Empowered One not going to connect as Peanut not flashing in. Um, um, okay, I'm not sure about that one, but the threaded volley will save him. And but then Peanut, and this is, yeah, this is weird. Um, yes. but thankfully Zekka was there. Uh, was almost a leap strike in power, and uh, it was just doomed as okay. Hook gonna connect on to Carrier once again. Chains of Corruption, pretty powerful as well, as they're now just right in the back of this pit. Peanut gonna be taken down first, though, as Zekka comes on in finally. Carrier keeping himself alive for so long, but will finally go down. And it's a two for one again here for Hama Life Esports. But Faker closing in. Kumiyushi still here as well. Charm going to land. And Faker just pops like a balloon. Delight has been a god today. And that's not going to end in this game. He has the Titan's Wrath. And Zayas, nothing he can do 1v4. Delight is just insane. The guy just knows. He is not the center variety of the no. Certainly not. But man, Atlas, I mean, these, these fights, these skirmishes are not going T1's way. The charm connects, but it's onto a tanky Nautilus who has Merc Treads. He just yeah. doesn't really care. Honolite Esports is going to take this Scuttle, the mini Baron. You know, you were like, oh, we're going, we going to Baron Pit. It does <laughs> yeah. feel like they have taken that much control. Oh my god, the damage from these Qs out of Viper Charm is just going to be avoided here by Doran, who's going to turn it around, gets the flash out from Carrier, and Ona has to leap strike his way out there, running for the hills, and Honolite Esports do get control of this dragon. First Infernal Dragon will be theirs here. Really flashy way to start off and, and guarantee they get this Pryo. No kills go over, but it's very successful. T1, there is no way they are going to be able to take this turret. They put only a small...
Rumble support who has to try to clear vision against Hanwha Life is never what you want to see. They're going to be able to grab this bottom turret here as well. This Aatrox getting a lot. Shelly, not going to get punished. Her gold is going to go to the nether or to the void, I guess. And in that turret is secured on this bottom side. That gold lead ballooning for Hanwha Life now over 3,000. And Hummer are just moving into their jungle. Okay, there's a seismic shove onto this. Rek'Sai does try to get on top of Viper, but he's just not low enough. No execution available. Immediate test map play to be had. And man, Hummer Life Esports came to play today. And you can just feel the desperation oh, out of T1. One. one as the Q connecting. Carrier just going to get wiped out by Zekka on his Talia that's starting to become one of the champions in his wheelhouse. Wolf, we mentioned. Get slimmer and slimmer every time you miss him. Oh dear, Peanut finds Ona one more time. Wind Becomes Lightning will not find the mark as the Weaver's Wall left a little to be desired as Equalizer going to come down to protect the Teleport. Still, Delight just straight up does not care about that one. Peanut also getting taken down relatively low, but that double knockoff was too good! And now Faker is having to get out of there. It's not going to work out. Still, it's a fair bit of damage, but it is not enough. They are too strong. Still, into the back line goes Zeus. Zeka able to find a lot of damage onto the Rek'Sai, and he shouldn't be able to get out. Still, those couple of kills onto the bottom lane could be important to try and keep T1 in this. Still, it's going to be the ace, and it should still be the Baron for Hummel Life. I don't think I, anybody would have predicted, a lot of people predicted Hummel. But now, still with this minion wave bearing down on the top in a turret, it is likely they are just going to be able to take this one. Equalizer does come on through, doesn't do a lot of damage to these minions as they're barroned up. And the flash out from Carrier as... All right, Doran, I'm not sure about this one, but still, he pops the World Ender. He's going to go down, but Carrier should follow suit. Zayus gets back underneath his turret. Faker is just in the side lane, trying to get them whatever bounty gold they can find. And it's working, because the Baron power play has gone down. Yeah, he is actually staying here as well. Zekka's going to... Uh, they might also be able to find themselves a dragon. Yeah, they might be able to. Now, okay, there's an interruption on Dezaeus. Uh, they're, they're buying time to secure the dragon, and uh, which they are going to be able to do. Yeah, at the cost of their inhibitor turret here, Ezeka is also pushing mid. One dragon here, if it was Infernal Soul, you'd feel pretty good about this. It's turned about here in trade for inhibitor turrets and a kill on to Zayas, as they're actually just going to get the whole inhibitor. T1 trying oh. to set up the flank. Yeah, Zekker in trouble. He's going to get charmed up. It's a lot of damage out from Faker as the flash has to be employed. Still, Hummel IV Sports are continuing to push. Uh, this in, this Nexus turret taking down to 50% health, and Weaver's Wall will get Zekker on over. So five members of Hummel Life Esports now in position, but they do want to back away. Kribuyushi does get his shield broken. Just kind of walked into his death there. It was really, really cute play around the mechanics of the Rek'Sai. He does have three items. He's very tanky, but Hummel Life Esports, they are looking to take down this inhibitor turret. And every auto from Viper is so scary. Still, Equalizer does come down. Chains of Corruption go wide. But still, how did T1 approach? There's rocks on the ground. There is so much poke available here as well. And there's a hook that's going to connect. The charm lands onto Viper. Zayas gets into the back line as well. And Viper is going to be taken out. Delight is extraordinarily low. They take down the rumble. But T1, this is the best fight they've had so far. And Gumiyushi is still untouched. Doran trying to get some work done, but he goes all the way into the sky. Oh my god. Never you mind. This Aatrox is too big. And he's just jumping all over the top of T1. Uh, he missed a lot, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> He's lethality in trucks, and he won't miss the autos. And once he gets on top of Guma, he takes him out there. Great fight for T1 all day. Auto attacks and stuff like that. He's got the Profane Hydra. The three items that he needed have been completed. Cyrilda's now done as well. Is now Hummel Life Esports getting to work on this Baron. My god, it goes down so quickly. The wall is put in the way of T1, and there's nothing they can do about it. I'm alive now with another Baron ready to push down on an exposed Nexus, remember. Faker loses a third of his health bar just to one arrow. And doesn't find the charm as Delight will find the hook onto the Rex side. Not exactly an optimal target. And now Peanut, he's going in. Equalizer goes down. Crescent got my god, this damage is disgusting! And I'm alive will just get rid of the bottom lane immediately. The knockup comes in, the prepared seismic shove! And, yeah, that Void Rush not going to be enough to save the Rek'Sai this time. And Hummel Life, a 3-0 over T1 in round two of playoffs. T1 will now have to face off against D-plus Kia in the lower bracket.
a very, very decisive and one-sided series. These were some of the best highlights from the LCK 2024 Spring Playoffs matchup between T1 and HLE. Which moment was your favorite? Let me know in the comment section below. This is OP, and I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.